Hey everybody and welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our side series on a technicality. What we're going to be showing you today is how to utilize alligator clips for testing different types of hardware. Before we get in, just go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, definitely helps us out. The reason we're showing you guys how to use alligator clips is simple. It allows you to quickly prototype a signal from one end of anything to another end of anything. Whether it's a video signal, whether it's a power signal, or whether it's a button signal, this allows you to test all your wire runs and make sure everything's functioning before you get your soldering iron out and actually put everything together. Short of that, what we're looking at right here is our multimeter. And by touching those two test points, we're going to see we have continuity. That number zero is out right there. We know we have a signal going from one end to the other. So unrolling the alligator clips here, what we're going to do is we're going to take one end of that probe and we're going to clamp it right in the clip. They stay in there pretty well. Sometimes they slip out, but it's pretty easy. What we're going to do is we're going to put the other end in the clips as well. And you're going to see that immediately we have continuity going through that alligator clip wire. We have all three zeros and we know we're good to go. So take a look at this button here. It's a standard Submitsu button. You have those two poles right on the end. It is signal agnostic. One can be plus five volt and one can be ground. It really doesn't matter which side you use. But if you bring the multimeter in and you touch each side of the posts, there is no continuity. Now that's just because the button isn't depressed. What we're going to be working on here is getting the alligator clips on. So we'll put one end on and the red we're just going to pretend it's plus 5 volt because that's red and that's usually live. And then we're going to take the second alligator clip which is going to be black and we're going to treat that as our ground for this short example. Now that we have both of those alligator clips on, we're going to be able to test for continuity and we're going to see exactly how this button functions in an alligator clip test mock-up. So what we'll do is we'll take the black probe and we'll put it in the black alligator clip just like this. Just make sure you get those teeth to bite on because it can slip out. And then we're going to go ahead and take the red probe and we're going to put that in just like we did the black probe. And you will see we have no continuity. Everything is listed as one point. So what we're going to do is just come in and we're going to push the button. And it's going to beep. We have now completed a circuit using those alligator test clips. Every time we push the button down, we have continuity going through those lines using the clips as our test leads. So what we're taking a look at here is a homemade kick harness I made for my CPS2 system. What we're going to mock up is just putting an extra button into the harness without having to run all the wires. Say you have a two or four player harness, you need an extra start button or something like that. You can just pop a button in without having to wire the whole thing up if you're just going to be prototyping it or testing it once. So with the alligator clips connected like we showed you in the first part, we're just going to bring this little bit of green wire in here and we're going to clamp that bare copper into the teeth of that alligator clip so we know that that line is now extended past the alligator clip into that little green wire there. We're going to do the same thing with the red wire. We're putting red and black together as the ground. The color coding is not correct, but it's what I had for wires and it really doesn't matter for this little tutorial. But now that we have those two wires set to go, we can pop them into our DB9 port and prototype a button for the CPS2. So I'm just going to use this empty pin right here, pin 9, and all we're going to do is put the wire in there. I do have a tutorial on how to use these field termination ports to create harnesses. So if you go back into the playlist on Auto Technicality, you can find out exactly what we're doing. But now that we have that pin in on 9, you just put the ground wherever the corresponding ground would go. So now that we have that here, what we're going to do, now that we have continuity on our test, we're just going to touch the metal on pin 9, and then we're going to touch the post on the button. And we're going to see that we have continuity all the way down the line, so we've extended a wire using alligator clips just to test what we're going to be doing. And it's a really useful thing, it's so quick, and you don't really have to do much work for it. So this is what it would look like in the end. We have the green wire going into ground and we have the red wire going into pin nine and we use those alligator clips to mock everything up. So now we have a new start or whatever button you want to have it in line in that kick harness. Just a really easy way to prototype. Really appreciate you guys watching. Thanks so much. Hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you next Tuesday for another brand new episode on Ana Technicality. Oh, and when you're done using the button, just take the alligator clips out and then you're good to go. Pull that red and green wire from your DB9 connectors, and then it's like it never existed whatsoever. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you on Tuesday for another episode. Bye-bye.